Hi, welcome to our learning episode on oral and visual presentations. Allow me to share my screen. We are to discuss oral and visual um, presentations for, in, I, I guess not all the exclusive, I guess it's not only exclusive to, to education or to teaching. Um, oral and visual presentation is very much important in all industries. It encompasses all industries. Um, especially, especially it is very, especially it is significant to, to business since we have to entice people, we have to market our products and we have to invite them, investors. Um, as you can see, as you can see um, in, in the photo, I mean in the slide, we have here Steve Jobs. Probably he is, um, if I'm not mistaken, he is introducing the Apple 5S during this time. Um, Steve Jobs is my favorite, um, is my favorite individual when it comes to oral and visual presentations because he's very, I mean, he, he has very simple slides and he could be able to, to explain each slide with, with intellect and with emotion. That means he appeals to both, to both intellect and to the emotion. That's why you, you can easily be persuaded. That's why you would love using Mac products, the iPhone, the iPad, the iPod, in the MacBook or the MacBook Air. Okay. Now I would like you to, I would like you to watch this um, video. This is a, this is like a nine to ten minute video during the first time that Apple was introduced in two thousand seven. This is a day I've been looking forward to for two and a half years. Every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along that changes everything. And Apple has been, well, first of all, one's very fortunate if you get to work on just one of these in your career. Apple's been very fortunate. It's been able to introduce a few of these into the world. 1984. We introduced the Macintosh. It didn't just change Apple. It changed the whole computer industry. In 2001, we introduced the first iPod. And it didn't just, it didn't just change the way we all listen to music. It changed the entire music industry. Well, today, we're introducing three revolutionary products of this class. The first one is a widescreen iPod with touch controls. The second is a revolutionary mobile phone. And the third is a breakthrough internet communications device. So, three things. A widescreen iPod with touch controls, a revolutionary mobile phone, and a breakthrough internet communications device. An iPod, a phone, <laughs> and an internet communicator. An iPod, <laughs> a phone. <laughs> are you getting it? These are not three separate devices. This is one device. And we are calling it iPhone. 
today, today Apple is going to reinvent the phone. And here it is. <laughs> no. Actually, here it is, but we're going to leave it there for now. So, before we get into it, let me, uh, let me talk about a category of things. The most advanced phones are called smartphones, so they say. And uh, they typically combine a phone plus some email capability, plus they say it's the internet, sort of the baby internet into one device. And they all have these plastic little keyboards on them. Uh, and uh, the problem is that they're not so smart and they're not so easy to use. So if you kind of make a you know, business school 101 graph of the smart axis and the easy to use axis, phones, regular cell phones are kind of right there. They're not so smart. And they're you know, not so easy to use. Um, but smartphones are definitely a little smarter, but they actually are harder to use. They're really complicated. Just for the basic stuff, people have a hard time figuring out how to use them. Well, we don't want to do either one of these things. What we want to do is make a leapfrog product that is way smarter than any mobile device has ever been and super easy to use. This is what iPhone is. Okay. So we're going to reinvent the phone. Now we're going to start with a revolutionary user interface. It is the result of years of research and development. And of course, it's an interplay of hardware and software. Now, why do we need a revolutionary user interface? I mean, here's four smartphones, right? Motorola Q, the BlackBerry, Palm Treo, Nokia E62, the usual suspects. And what's wrong with their user interfaces? Well, the problem with them is really sort of in the bottom 40 there. It's, it's this stuff right here. They all have these keyboards that are there whether you need them or not to be there. And they all have these control buttons that are fixed in plastic and are the same for every application. Well, every application wants a slightly different user interface, a slightly optimized set of buttons just for it. And what happens if you think of a great idea six months from now? You can't run around and add a button to these things. They're already shipped. So what do you do? It doesn't work because the buttons and the controls can't change. They can't change for each application, and they can't change down the road if you think of another great idea you want to add to this product. Well, how do you solve this? Hmm. It turns out we have solved it. We solved it in computers 20 years ago. We solved it with a bitmap screen that could display anything we want, put any user interface up, and a pointing device. We solved it with the mouse, right? We solved this problem. So how are we going to take this to a mobile device? Well, what we're going to do is get rid of all these buttons and just make a giant screen. A giant screen. Now, how are we going to communicate this? We don't want to carry around a mouse, right? So what are we going to do? Oh, a stylus, right? We're going to use a stylus. No. No. Who wants a stylus? You have to get them and put them away, and you lose them. Yuck. Nobody wants a stylus. So let's not use a stylus. We're going to use the best pointing device in the world. We're going to use a pointing device that we're all born with. We're born with 10 of them. We're going to use our fingers. We're going to touch this with our fingers. And we have invented a new technology called multi-touch, which is phenomenal. It works like magic. <laughs> you don't need a stylus. It's far more accurate than any touch display that's ever been shipped. It ignores unintended touches. It's super smart. You can do multi-finger gestures on it. And boy, have we patented it. <laughs> so, so we've been very lucky to have brought a few revolutionary user interfaces to the market in our time. First was the mouse. The second was the click wheel. And now we're going to bring multi-touch to the market. 
And each of these revolutionary user interfaces has made possible a revolutionary product. The Mac, the iPod, and now the iPhone. So, a revolutionary user interface. We're going to build on top of that with software. Now, software on mobile phones is like, it's like baby software. It's not so powerful. And today, we're going to show you a software breakthrough. Software that's at least five years ahead of what's on any other phone. Now, how do we do this? Well, we start with a strong foundation. iPhone runs OS X. Yeah. Now, why, why would we want to run such a sophisticated operating system on a mobile device? Well, because it's got everything we need. It's got multitasking. It's got the best networking. It already knows how to power manage. We've been doing this on mobile computers for years. It's got awesome security. And to write apps, it's got everything from Coco and the graphics, and it's got core animation built in, and it's got the audio and video that OS X is famous for. It's got all the stuff we want, and it's built right in to iPhone. And that has let us create desktop class applications and networking, right? Not the crippled stuff that you find on most phones. This is real desktop class applications. Now, you know, one of the pioneers of our industry, Alan Kay, has had a lot of great quotes throughout the years. And I ran across one of them recently that explains how we look at this, explains why we go about doing things the way we do, because we love software. And here's the quote. People who are really serious about software should make their own hardware. You know? Alan said this 30 years ago. And this is how we feel about it. And so we're bringing breakthrough software to a mobile device for the first time. It's five years ahead of anything on any other phone. That's the video of um, Steve Jobs when he first introduced iPhone in the market in 2007. As you can observe, um, during the presentation, Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs is using not a PowerPoint, but a keynote. But though he has this very big screen behind him, our eyes is not, our eyes and ears is not focused on the screen, but we focused it on Steve Jobs. Because our visual presentation is just supposed to supplement our oral presentation and it must not be stand alone we the one who is presenting must be stand alone and our visual presentation must be supporting our um, discussion now uh, we have preliminary steps in we have preliminary steps in understanding um, visual presentation oral presentation or presentation in general we have to remember that presentation is about public speaking and the three preliminary steps provides us a picture of a challenge of a provides a picture of of its benefits now provides a picture of a challenge it provides a picture of its benefits number one we have to acknowledge the challenge that it is not as it is not as as, as simple as a bc no, it is actually as hard as the equation that you see now on your screen. That how challenging it is when we say presentation, oral presentation, public presentation, or public speaking. Second, we also have to recognize its costs and we have to recognize its benefit. And we say when we master presentation or we could be able to deliver presentation, it would equate to benefits, benefits that are beyond understanding. It develops us personally and it develops also our intellectual ability and abilities and other abilities as well. And then the third, we are committed to learning because we are supposed to thrive, we are supposed to grow, we are supposed to, to improve. That makes, um, that makes us understand our weak points and that makes us understand that these weak, weak points must be overcome later on. Now, these are the steps in developing presentation skills. Number one, Number one, before we 
we come up with our presentation, before we come up with our presentation, before we present um, what we have in mind already, these are the three steps. Number one, we have to observe. We have to observe the environment. We have to observe, um, we have to, to observe culture. We have to observe context. Second, when we, since we are studying the topics so that we are about to present, we have to reflect also. When we study something, we have to reflect also. And then the last, we have to select only the items that we need to present, worthy to be, to be included in our slides. We have to practice and we have to assess ourselves, our, our progress, our progress when it comes to presentation. These are the three steps and we have to look at them um, closely, one after the other. Now, the basic, the basics, um, the basics when it comes to when it comes to um, presentation is that we need to understand that our slides, like what you see now on your screen, are just supplementary to to our discussion, to the discussion which is supposed to be delivered by the person who shall present everything else before the audience. Second, that these are just illustrations. I mean, these are meaningless. I don't say they are not meaningful. What I'm saying is they are less they they have less meaning they have less meaning because further explanations of whatever you see in the slide must be made by the one who is presenting it similar to the video that you have seen a while ago when steve jobs presented the first iphone in 2007 when you try to look at his keynote slides his keynote slides no the slides are almost um the slides are very minimalist like to be able to see only a picture a photo, few words only, or by simply having like keywords in the slides, and then he could be able to expand everything else to to give you um to give you a very meaty discussion of whatever you see on the the slide, and that's something that we have to to remember. We shall not be putting everything else in our slides because we are still needed in every visual presentation. Now. We have to look at basic terminologies now of um, PowerPoint because, um, well, in, in the previous slide, you could be able to see that, could be able to see that at present, we have Google Slides, we have PowerPoint, and we have Keynote. These are, I guess, these are the three famous um, applications when it comes to coming up with, um, with um, presentation, just like what you see now on your, on your screen. But the most popular, if I'm not mistaken, is PowerPoint. Now, let's look at the basic terminologies of basic terminologies of um, PowerPoint. Number one, we number one we have the deck. When you say deck, um, when you say deck, we refer to everything. We, we refer to all the slides. We refer to to all the slides. Um, we refer to all the the slides of a particular presentation. For example, for example, today we have thirty slides, thirty slides, and when you see all of them, you call that a um, is gloss. When you say gloss, we refer to the person in itself, like whatever the speaker is supposed to to um, to tell to the audience. Third, we're looking at the slide. We are looking at the individual slide in a deck. Okay, so these are the three first three basic terminologies. We have deck, gloss, and um, slide. Next is we have to look at slide titles. In the diagram, I mean, in the photo that you can see now, um, the word diagrams is the slide title. Then everything else that you can see right after, everything else that you can see right after um, the word, I mean, the, the slide title is what you call body text, body text. And um, the figure that you could be able to see now on your on this slide which is figure six bicycle drive train is what you call exhibit now when you try to look at when we are looking at um like transit when, when we are looking at how slides are being transitioned to one another to one over the other or for example um any effect that we could be able to see in in a slide graphical effects you call that decorative graphics and on the presentation and on the presenters um presenters um view if if um the presenter has like important details that he needs to 
uh, an important details like that he he needs to to tell to everyone that he cannot afford to forget telling about it then that's what we call about then that, that's what we call notes that's what we call notes. so these are the other five additional basic terminologies when it comes to be, to powerpoint presentations we have slide titles body text decorative graphics exhibits and notes again um thank you very much for um listening to our oral and visual presentation lecture today if you have questions kindly send me an email to these email addresses thank you very much and see you in our next learning episode